Welcome to the Standard 9th English Prose Lesson, A Dream of Light, written by the author K.S. Raman. K.S. Raman was an aeronautical engineer by profession. His interests encompassed the faculties of aerospace, automobiles, architecture, photography, music, culture, and history. This particular lesson is a first person narrative of K.S. Raman after he read the book, The Invention of the Aeroplane. Engrossed in Charles H. Gibbs Smith's book, The Invention of the Aeroplane, I realized it was evening only when my friend came in. I glimpsed this book amidst a heap of leather bound volumes in an old bookshop two days ago. The title had aroused my curiosity. I bought it and started reading as soon as I reached home. The book explained in great detail man's eternal longing and hope that led to innumerable trials, most of which ended as disasters and subsequent experimentation arising from various inventions used for flight before the advent of aeroplane as we know of it today. I found the book so absorbing that I even forgot about my regular evening walk. My friend, who is an avid aviation enthusiast, glanced at the book and told me that he too would like to read it later when he was sure that I would not budge out of my chair. My friend asked me to be up and ready at six o'clock sharp next morning and departed. Reading almost non-stop, it was past midnight when I finally finished the book and put it down. I switched off the light and dropped off exhausted on the bed. With the events from the book so fresh in my memory. Gradually, as I drifted off to sleep, I could almost feel the tension and excitement when some incidents started floating right in front of my eyes. 1496 AD From atop a soaring tower stands a man with bat-like wings made from wood and cloth, covered with birds' feathers. The air rings with encouraging shouts from a big crowd gathered far down and ruffles the feathers on his cloth. The bird man flexes his shoulders and beating his arms fast suddenly jumps out. But what in heaven's name is happening? Instead of flying free in the sky like a bird, the man is tumbling down inverted and totally out of control. As the crowd scatters hastily, he falls in their midst in a tangled heap of cloth and feathers and the shrill wails of women pierce the sky. Another adventurer who wanted to fly like a bird has lost his life. 1783 AD In the town of Annonoy in France, hundreds of people are gathered in the market square. Flames leap high from a huge pile of burning wood in the middle of the square, held by thick ropes all around. On top of the fire is a mammoth globular fabric envelope with its bottom open and decorated with colorful motifs. As the spear fills with hot hair and eaves from side to side, four persons cut off the ropes. The crowd watches, open-mouthed, as the spherical balloon starts flying upwards and drifts across the sky. A sheep, a hen and a duck placed in the basket of the balloon become the first air passengers. 1853-80 A boat-shaped contraption with the wheels at the bottom having a big wing shaped like the hood of a snake stands atop a small hill. Four triangular surfaces in the form of a cross are at the back supported by a wooden frame. Sir George Cayley puts his carriage chauffeur inside and gives a big push. The vehicle starts rolling on its wheels and rushes towards the valley below. But as it gathers speed, this weird craft leaves the ground. Floating in the air, it touches down on the other side of the valley. Man has at last devised a contraption with which he could launch himself from a hill and glide down to the ground. 1891-80 Otto Lilienthal lifts a strange craft built from wood and fabric and brings it out of a shed 
built atop a big hill comprising two six meter long bat like wings on top of another with a horizontal and vertical surface behind this craft has a ring shaped frame between the wings lillian paul steps inside the frame and with his arms supporting the ring runs forward within a few steps lillian paul's craft starts floating in the air hanging beneath lillian paul glides for a long distance and touches down at the bottom of the hill 1903 AD. huge mounds of sand abound all around in kitty hawk dunes in north carolina a two-winged machine stands on a long wooden rafter orville wright lies prone in the middle over the bottom wing a small internal combustion engine by its side turns a pair of two-bladed paddle wheels through long bicycle chains as the engine growls wilbur wright frees the rope holding the machine and it surges forward moving about 12 meters per second the machine suddenly lifts up and behold it is flying in the air the piercing sound of the alarm clock puts a full stop to my dreams of flight and brings me back to reality my friend who arrived on the dot at six in the morning takes me straight to a small airfield outside the city flight logbook entries and diary entries of aviators are also important in aviation history that need to be documented recorded archived and preserved for readers and aviation enthusiasts to gain valuable insights j font show typeface is apt for teaching aviation history in the classroom library and museum to honor grd tata the father of civil aviation in india so the prose lesson dream of flight teaches us that it is very important to have an aviation historical timeline in the classroom to enable students to be familiarized with aviation history and also to take them for museum visits so aviation museums which are located in and around the city can help students in the classroom as well as aviators to be in sync and connect to aviation